Hey there, friends, what's up? So today, oh my goodness, sometimes my left and right channels, I'm, I'm getting a new audio interface today, but you'll notice that right now, the left ear, your left ear is probably like, wow, this is quiet, and your right ear is like, oh my goodness, what's going on? So I'm getting a new interface that'll just do mono, hopefully, uh, but right now I'm just gonna fix this really quick. Hopefully that's better, yeah, there we go. Sorry about that, it, and it changes like randomly, and I don't know what to do to fix that. Um, like it's under a box, like nobody's touching this stuff. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about HTML input element, this really cool thing that we probably most of us have used many times. This is the thing right there. Um, so I've got DevTools open, and I've got my input right there. We're gonna play around with this DOM node because I learned something pretty cool today about validation so there's this validity api and there's a validation message this is the new thing that i learned about today um and will validate it's kind of interesting so yeah let's go ahead and check this out um so i'm gonna say actually did you know uh, it says use dollar zero in the console to refer to this element isn't that cool so as you click around and stuff um, that dollar zero changes. What's really interesting about this, so I've got dollar zero that refers to the input, then I click to the body, and I do dollar zero that refers to the body. Dollar one refers to the previous thing. Dollar two refers to the thing I had clicked before that, which is kind of cool. I've actually never really used dollar one or two because I, I forget what I last clicked on, but it's kind of cool that you can um, use those. So anyway, um, boy, I've got a lot of autocomplete things. I don't know how to get rid of those. As you can see, I will often speed up or slow down video. That's what that playback rate thing is. And I was playing around with this API earlier today. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and set attribute uh, email. Well, actually, let's, let's start out with something a little easier. So uh, with just a plain old input, if I say validity, it's gonna give me this validity state object. Um, and there is, um, nothing true about this except that it is valid. So I can say uh, zero validity is valid, or sorry, just simply valid, and that will get true. I can also say check validity and call that function. That will give me true. I don't know if that function accepts any arguments. Um, let's find out. Check validity. Uh, no, it does not. Um, it also fires an in valid event at the element. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, this report of validity, we're gonna play around with that uh, later too. Okay, so I don't think it takes any arguments. Um, so yeah, you can check the validity one or um, one way or the other. Uh, and then let's go ahead and make it invalid. So I'm gonna say um, set attribute required true. So now it's required, so let's check the validity again. Now it's not valid, and the reason that it's not valid, if we look at that validity state object, is value missing. So you can check that and like, oh, it's it's invalid. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, cool. So I, I have different translations for every one of these things, um, every one of these validity states, and then I don't have to worry about, uh, like I can build a kind of generic solution for a default, and then people can add you know, um, an override or something. I'm, I'm making an input component. Um, so anyway, what I found out was there is a validation message, which will show um, that validation message. And I was like, no way, that's so awesome. That, that's that gotta be like localized. Otherwise, why would the browser support it? So I verified it is localized. So if the user has set their browser language to um, anything else, then um, that message will be in what language they set. And get this, it is supported validation message like everywhere, Internet Explorer 10. So if you're supporting nine, uh, I'm so sorry for you. Um, that's awful. It's bad enough to support Internet Explorer 10, but uh, yeah, it's supported all the way back there, which is sweet. So you can use validation message as a really good default message to show the user. Um, and you can pull that from the node and then display that in a nice way, or you can just call report validity, and ta-da, it'll pop up with a little thing. That's a default um, behavior for, like, I mean, it'll look different for every browser and, and stuff, so it may not be what you're looking for, but um, 
There it is. That is a, a thing you can do. Now, uh, one thing that I didn't check is let's set attribute type is email. So then we'll say report. Well, actually, it's we need to fill it out. So let's uh, say the value is not an email. Not an email. So the value is not an email. Now, if I report validity, it says please uh, include an at in the email address. And if I get rid of that value and then report validity again, it's going to say please fill out the field. So it doesn't show both of the error messages. If you look at the um, validation message, it'll only show one of them. I'm not sure um, how it determines which one to show, but um, that's that's another thing that's kind of interesting. Um, let's see. I feel like there was another thing I wanted to um, wanted to show. I think that's it. Um, so it's yeah. There's um, report validity, um, validation message, the validity object. Uh, oh yeah, there's set custom validity. I don't know how to use this. I didn't look into this one. Set custom validity. Um, so you can set a custom validity message for the element. Um, yeah, and all, all it, it does is if you do provide a message, then that means that it's invalid for that reason. So let's try that. We'll make it uh, totally valid. Um, valid email.com. Sweet. So then we can say report validity returns true, which I think means that it's it's valid here. Let's just get rid of this, make it invalid, and report validity re return false if it's invalid. Okay. Okay. Dot com. Cool. So um, let's say set custom validity. What did you do? What have you done? Okay. So now if we report validity, we'll get false because it's not valid. And it says, what did you do? So it, it uh, yeah. And then when we want to say, oh, no, you, you fixed it. It's now valid. Then you just give it an empty message. And we can report validity. It says it's true. That means it's valid. And so we're, we're set, um, which is pretty cool. I think that's it. So you've got um, report validity, uh, the validity uh, state object, the um, uh, set custom validity, well, we've got them all right here. Uh, validity message, uh, check validity. Um, yeah, lots of lots of pretty cool things with uh, validation. Oh yeah, and then also will validate. So I think in forms as well, you can check the uh, validity of um, of different uh, like elements within a form, and then if any of them are invalid, then the form's validity will be set to false, or whatever. And you can check the validity in forms and stuff. But um, yeah, um, if you set will validate to false, then it just is never checked for validation. Um, and so, yeah, you can use that too, I guess. So I, I would generally avoid using that one, probably. Oh, it's read only anyway. Hmm. I don't know how to set that. Will validate. Yeah, I'm not sure how to set will validate. Well, uh, maybe it's uh, an attribute. So you say that attribute will validate false. And will validate. Yeah, I don't know. Set it to false. Yeah, it's it's read only. I'm not sure how to do that one. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I probably wouldn't want to use that one anyway. Cool. I hope this was helpful. Um, I thought it was pretty neat. And uh, yeah, oh my goodness, you may not have noticed, but slowly the left has gone down in audio volume. So here, here's the thing. I've got this software. If I switch um, my input to this software thing, now it should be like totally equal. But um, in recent times that I've used this, the audio will like cut out stuff. So I don't know if I can trust it. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe I'll use that until I get my, my new interface and hopefully that interface thing. But anyway, I hope this was super helpful and that you enjoy working with forms. I think they're kind of fun. All right. I'll see you later.